Hi, it's Scott Vogel on Sex Addiction, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the five most common questions often asked about sex addiction. Because of the sensitive and very personal nature of sex addiction, pornography addiction, sex and love addiction, and sexual addiction, there's a limited awareness and amount of information about the disease. So I'm going to share the five most common questions about sex addiction. The first question most commonly asked is, what is sex addiction? Sex addiction has no official diagnosis. There's a general definition agreed upon by clinicians and researchers to define sex addiction. It's defined similar to chemical addictions. And we're going to use the definition by the Society for the Advancement of Sexual Health. And that definition is, sex addiction is a persistent and escalating pattern or patterns of sexual behaviors acted out despite increasingly negative consequences to self or others. This definition is pretty similar to drugs or alcohol addiction. However, with sex addiction, the addiction is to behaviors, not a substance. Behaviors such as masturbation, pornography, sex with multiple or anonymous partners, cyber sex, phone sex, prostitution, and many other obsessive compulsive sexual behaviors. So question two is what are the symptoms of sex addiction? The main symptom is the obsession. A sex addict will spend time thinking about and planning to act out in their unwanted sexual behaviors. The compulsion is the actual time spent in acting out, which could range from minutes to hours to days to weeks and sometimes years. The progression, the disease gets progressively worse. As once somebody starts a sex addiction, they want more and more to get their fix. The sex addict has to lie in order to keep their sex addiction a secret. There's too much shame and guilt around the behaviors. A sex addict gets irritable and cranky when they can't act out or when they've acted out too much, don't get enough sleep, and don't get enough done. And a major symptom is the loss of control. They can't control the disease. The disease controls them. They do not have the power to stop. Question three is what is the difference between regular sexual behavior and a sex addiction? It's normal for many adults to desire sexual activity. Many actually enjoy masturbation or pornography, adult bookstores, and even cyber or phone sex. So how do you determine the difference whether you just have a healthy sex drive or a sex addiction? The main difference is the sex addict arranges their entire lives around sex in much the same way that a drug addict's life revolves around drugs. It's the frequency in which they engage in their behaviors. It's the repetition over and over again. And it's the escalation. Once they start, they can't stop and they need more. You see, a normal sexual individual might watch a porn video, might masturbate or engage in cyber sex or phone sex with a partner or lover. The sex addict, however, becomes so compulsive and obsessive, they can't stop no matter the consequences. They need more time with their addiction, where the normal person can engage in a behavior and once it completes, say, okay, it's time for me to go back to my life, the sex addict has to plan more the next, the next episode with greater escalation and frequency. So what causes sex addiction? While sex addiction is not fully understood, many believe it stems in part from a biochemical imbalance. In our brains, we are rewarded for food and rewarded for sex. It's the basic makeup. We needed to eat to sustain life, so we got feel-good pleasure chemicals, dopamines, endorphins, when we have sex, we keep the species going. If we don't, the species die. So eating and sex are tied to very powerful chemicals. And in sex addicts, they're found to be chemical imbalances. Many sex addicts came from dysfunctional families where they just weren't raised for a normal, healthy life. Many were abused, whether it was physically, sexually, emotionally. Some have had trauma in their lives, abandonment, neglect, enmeshment, and some had improper role modeling. They just weren't taught to be normal, healthy, functioning human beings. 
And the last most commonly asked question is what treatment is available for sex addiction? Well, there are 12-step programs like Sexaholics Anonymous, Sex Addicts Anonymous, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous. There's individual therapy, which is very important as a person works through recovery to deal with the issues that they discover about their past. There's group therapy, where they're involved with other people who have similar issues that they do. Inpatient treatment for those that can afford it that want a much faster way to get into recovery. There's outpatient treatment following inpatient treatment where you work with professionals on a regular basis. And then there's long-term rehabilitation centers for those that have severe sex addictions. So in review of the five most common questions about sex addiction, first, what is sex addiction? We defined it as a persistent and escalating pattern or patterns of sexual behaviors acted out despite increasingly negative consequences to self or others. Some of the symptoms, we talk about obsession, compulsion, lying, loss of control. The difference between regular sexual behavior and a sex addiction, well, the normal person enjoys healthy sex. They can stop when they've had enough. They can engage in behaviors and stop whereas a sex addict needs more frequency, more repetition, and has to escalate. They can't stop, they can't control it. What causes sex addiction? Biochemical imbalance, dysfunctional family life, abuse, trauma, faulty role models. And what treatment is available for sex addiction? 12-step programs, individual treatment, group therapy, inpatient treatment, outpatient treatment, and long-term care facilities. Visit our YouTube channel on sex addiction for more videos on sex addiction and recovery from sex addiction. Go to www.onsexaddiction.com for a free video explaining sex addiction, what causes sex addiction, traumas of sex addiction, the four faulty core beliefs caused by sex addiction, and how to get into recovery from sex addiction, as well as more information about sex addiction and sex addiction recovery.